My name is Marissa and I am the Umbrian Sewist. Thank you for joining me on my first video. Uh, so excuse me if there's any issues or if it's not edited correctly. Thank you for your patience. This is probably the fifth time I've recorded a video. Uh, so hopefully this one works and I decide to upload it. So I'm called the Umbrian Sois because um, although I'm an American, I live in Umbrian, Italy. I've lived here for three years. I have a husband and a six-year-old son. And I mostly enjoy garment sewing. And I sew garments for myself and my son. I do not sew for my husband because he does not like homemade garments or the idea of homemade garments. Although, little does he know that he's getting a homemade sweater for Christmas. So fingers crossed that he likes it. I did make a sweater recently and you could see that he thought, ooh, that's nice. Um, so I thought, yeah, I'll make him a sweater if he doesn't want it. I'll give it to someone else. Anyways, to kick things off, I'll tell you what I'm wearing. I am wearing the Plantain Tea by Deer and Doe free sewing pattern. Really like this. I um, have made the size 50, which is a bust of 44, waist of 36, hips of 46. Um, my actual measurements um, fall within the size 48 or 46. Um, however, I do prefer it a little um, baggier and I say not baggier, looser. And uh, also, um, because I do wear it typically over leggings, it is quite roomy and, uh, and I, I quite like the way that feels. So uh, that is the, the plantain by Deer and Doe. Uh, anyway, so what I'm going to do today is talk to you a little bit about some of the things I did this weekend and um, some of my plans for the coming week. My goal is to record a video once a week, maybe more depending if there's anything worth sharing or anything that I deem to be potentially interesting, who knows. Um, and uh, so yeah, so I'll start off today by telling you a little bit about some things that I've been doing craft related. Um, and I thought that it could be interesting um, given that uh, maybe some of you have children and are looking to have your children make um, homemade gifts or things like that. Um, so the first thing, and I will, um, one second, I already forgot something. I'll be right back. So in the process of getting something, I knocked over the camera. And um, yeah, so, so far it's going well. Anyway, as I was trying to say, I purchased this, which is called Doodle Clay. Um, I purchased it from uh, Stoff and Still, which is now called Self Made. Um, it's basically super cool. This is a kit. So this kit comes with um, some instructions, uh, a little sort of cookie cutter, uh, some clay, and um, also really cool comes with some tools and um, some letters and numbers to allow you to sort of write things on your item, which is where? Here. So my son and I decided to make some little Christmas ornaments. Okay, you can see I have a little hole at the top, so I'm gonna put a piece of string. And the word is meant to be on a diagonal, saying Christmas 2021. And we just used a cookie cutter. Um, you put them in the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes at 130 centigrade. And um, yeah, and uh, we will actually, once they're cooked, you can actually paint them as well. This is another one. You can learn some Italian while you watch my video as well. Natale, Christmas 2021. Um, and again, a little um, hole. So I'll put a string through that. We'll definitely be, be painting that one. Um, but yeah, it's a super cool um, activity. You can definitely get um, more intricate with some of the um, designs and things, but obviously my son is six, so, and also I have no skill in this kind of area. So this is about both the level of my six-year-old and my level. Um, but yeah, um, and this color, this clay here, this red, did not come with the kit. Um, it's actually using um, 
Now, I'm not sure if Fimo clay is an American brand name for the clay, but basically it's a type of clay that comes in different colors when you put it in the oven. So another thing that we did today was use that clay um, to make little beads. So you can see I just poked a hole. Oop, can you see through? Yep. Um, but yeah, a bunch of different colors and designs. Actually, in all honesty, I was trying to use up some random bits of color. Um, but uh, my son is going to make this into a little bracelet for his grandmother. Or maybe a little keychain. But yeah, so these these get extremely firm when you um, bake them. But you can see we have a little assortment there. But yes, that's also a really nice... Um, thing uh, to do with children, potentially, if you want to have them make gifts for people. Um, so that is what I've done. I've also decorated uh, the trees. If I can figure out how to insert a picture, maybe am I supposed to stand, go like that? No idea. I'm gonna do that. Maybe I'll figure out how to put a picture there. Uh, but yes, we have two trees because why not? We're stuck here. Not stuck here in Italy, but just stuck indoors. Um, and we may be locked down again. Who knows? So I figure more trees. Why not? So that was fun. So we decorated the trees. Um, and now I'm looking ahead. My son is off of school tomorrow for, um, there's like a, the saint of the local town is tomorrow. No idea. And then on the 8th, which is Wednesday, he's also off of school for, I don't know the word in English. It's a holiday. So he goes to school Tuesday. Anyways, I have a reduced amount of time, plus I do work. Um, so I will try to get some things done um, this week. So these are my plans. The first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to be making, excuse me while I get my notebook, the Infinity Scarf um, by Apple Green Cottage. And I found out about this while watching, or while um, from Thread Therapy Instagram. Uh, she showed a, a picture of a scarf, Infinity Scarf, and it uh, looked really nice. So I thought I'd give it a try. So I'm going to make it. It's, um, it's sort of a reversible scarf. And I'm gonna make it with these two pieces of scrap. This is not the same fabric as my shirt, but it does look that way. Um, they're both stretch, sort of, this is definitely heavier. It looks, it's more like a ponte. Um, but yes, I have sort of odd shapes of these. Um, so it seems like you need to do this. Sorry for the color, funny color there. You need two, um, you need basically 60 inches or 150 centimeters-ish long, um, and then only 12 inches wide in this piece. Um, is actually a scrap. And so that's really all I have. So that's what I'm gonna do with these. So that should be fun. I am also going to be making this pattern, which is Simplicity 8801. I'm going to make this version, version B, um, which I have made before. It's really, really nice. Um, super easy to make, super comfortable um, for pajamas. And I have already cut it out and I'm going to be making it in this jer spandex jersey. It's a navy blue ba background with white flowers. And um, yeah, so I think that'll be really nice and comfortable. Um, so that's my first project. These are in no particular order. Um, that's sort of a bigger project, I suppose, because it is a jumpsuit. The next thing I'm gonna make is this. This is very easy. So if I'm feeling like an easy project, this is a good one. I just make it in this standard sweatshirt. Um, it fits me really well. It is not an inclusive size. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, excuse me. This is, as you can see, um, for children and adults. The adults, the B, um, comes into a small to extra large. And I make a large, which is bust, 
40 to 42, waist 30 to 34, hips 40 to 40, 42 to 44, and it fits very, very nicely. Um, my actual measurements are about on the top end of that, so 42 for bust, 34 for waist, and 43 for hips. Um, and it actually fits. To be honest, that's quite a miracle because I never have any luck with these types of patterns from like Simplicity in the Calls. So anyways, that's a good one. This one is an incre incredibly non-inclusive size range. So I wear the size 44. I cannot tell you the measurements because I believe they're on the pattern pieces, but this pattern only comes into a 34 to 44, which is a US size 8 to 18. Um, but anyway, it's really, really nice. Um, and like I said, I've only, I've made this one before and that's, I haven't made any other variations. And to be honest, none of the other ones really appeal. So that's the next one and I'm going to make it, um, in this sort of oatmeal. I would call it oatmeal. Don't know why. Um, really nice French terry. Super nice. I believe I bought this when I lived in the United States, which is over three and a half years ago. So I will not be able to tell you where I bought that. And um, I didn't have enough for the, um, for the ribbing. So I'm gonna use this um, very similar color. Actually, it works really nicely. This ribbing. So that'll be nice and cozy to wear around the house. And then the last plan I have is this South Bank sweater. I am going to make it in version two with a band. Now, I'm not sure if you're, I've not made it before, and I'm not sure. The only concern I have is if the band here will fit here. I don't know if it's like, it looks like it's the point where it starts going down. So it, I think it will work. Anyway, I'm making it in this lovely cable knit in this really pretty turquoisey, greeny, petrol blue. Don't really know. It's more green. I have no idea. Very, very nice. It's got a bit of stretch. Um, but it definitely has enough stretch because I've seen many um, South Bank sweaters made in cable knit. So yes, I'm gonna make this middle version. I have cut out, which size have I cut out? I believe I cut out the size 16, which is a 42 bust, 34 waist, 43 and a half hips. And this pattern goes in, goes from, size six to a size 20. Um, but I think I'm extremely late to the table with this one because everybody has made it. But anyways, my last project hopefully will be the South Bank sweater. No, not my last project. My last project will be to take this super pretty uh, cotton, fabric and make a tablecloth and napkins. And um, yeah, I have a new table with a new size and I don't have any tablecloths or napkins. I bought this um, from an amazing fabric store um, local to me here in Umbria, um, which is basically like a warehouse with 25 foot ceilings, um, completely packed with fabric. And the building is probably 5,000 square feet. Yeah, it's amazing. It's dangerous, but amazing. Anyway, they're all tip, they're all fabrics made and mostly made in Italy, but all made in Europe. Beautiful, beautiful quality. And, um, in, Italian, not typical Italian style, but at this kind of place, you go in and it's owned by these really nice two brothers and they follow you around. But of course, 
for someone like me, I just want to go around and touch everything. And I will buy, I always buy something, but I want to look and touch everything. And um, anyways, now they know not to follow me around and I'll tell them when I'm ready. Um, but there's no prices on anything. So um, you have to say, how much is this? And then they, they touch it, they feel it like, is it a thin jersey or a thick ponte or, you know, a viscose or silk or wool? You never know the price until they tell you. Um, but now I have a general idea, but the prices are incredible. Like for, for um, jersey, you'll never pay more than eight euros a meter. Um, but they're, they're very, very wide fabrics, minimum 150, but also off, oftentimes two meters wide. Um, so, and this particular fabric was 2.8 meters wide. So I only need to purchase one meter. So anyway, um, it's very lovely fabric. And then the other project, which I can pretty much tell you I will not have time to get around to, is to refashion this tablecloth which was for a table I had when I lived in London, which was 12 years ago, 10 years ago. Anyways, you can see it's a bit sparkly. Anyways, I wanna refashion this into either a new tablecloth or, nah, well, no, nah, a new tablecloth for that new table I mentioned. So I have a couple of options. Anyway, that is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was not too boring, uh, considering it's my first video. Um, I have purchased an embarrassing amount of fabric, um, or I did in the supposed Black Friday sales. Um, I say supposed because as an American, it was always on the Black Friday. It was on the Friday, you know, we used to like wake up. Well, I didn't. My brother used to wake up and stand in line to go to Best Buy and buy whatever new thing they had. However, I purchased a lot of fabric um, and because I live in Italy, it takes a long time to get here. So I suspect it will have some interesting um, videos coming up, hopefully about the fabric that I purchased. Please don't judge me. Anyway, Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will be back soon. Bye.